Hey, before we get into this episode, have you seen that my new book is out? It's called Stop Selling and Help Them Buy Weddings and Events. And it's a book that you helped me write because you would ask me at a conference, which of your books has what you just spoke about on stage? And if it wasn't in any of my books, I'd say it's in the next one. Well, here it is. Here's the next one. Uh, how to respond to reviews. What if you don't like doing sales? The three questions to ask every prospect, or they can't ask for what they don't know exists. These are just some of the chapters in there. And the beauty is you don't have to read it front to back. You can jump around to any chapter, kind of like my other book, Wit Wisdom in the Business of Weddings, where you can jump to any chapter because they're not necessarily connected to one another. And if you want to get free shipping on a paperback copy, go to shopallenberg.com and use the coupon code podcast. That's shopallenberg.com. Use the coupon code podcast, get free shipping on me. Otherwise it's on Audible, it's on uh, uh, Kindle. And if you go to podcast allenberg.com. The links are all there as well. Thanks. Is your email signature helping or hurting? Listen to this episode. See why I'm talking about this. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Alan Berg. I'm a speaker, author, sales trainer, website reviewer, and I help businesses like yours sell more, profit more, and have more fun doing it. Enjoy this episode. Hi, it's Alan Berg. Welcome to another episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. This one was prompted by a few emails that I've received recently from people, and it got me thinking about email signatures. Now, I use Outlook for my main email, and I have many, many different signatures I use for different things, but there's two main ones. One is if I'm initiating a conversation, sending a message, and that one's a little bit longer. And then I have one if I'm just replying or if it's a, you know, a, an ongoing conversation, replying, forwarding, and that one's a lot shorter because otherwise the, the bigger signature is just going to get added to each one which is another setting you could do and tell it not to put your signature on each one. But I do, I just tell it to do a shorter one. My longer one has a little bit more information about me. It's got links to my books and things like that. And the shorter one is just the basic information and contact information and a title and stuff like that. But here's what prompted this. I've received quite a few emails lately where someone's email signature includes a graphic. And that graphic might have your photo on it, it might have a company logo on it, and it has your contact information. But here's the problem. The implication is, I now have your contact information. The reality is, it's in a picture. Which means, I can't click on your phone number to call you. I can't click on your website to go there. I can't, I can't click on your address if you had an address in there so I can map out to get to where you are. So it actually is setting up an expectation which cannot be met. Worse on some of these, the graphic wasn't sharp. So when I went into the email, I couldn't even read the contact information because it was too small, especially on the phone. But a couple of them I couldn't read on my laptop or even on my desktop because when you zoomed in to make it bigger, it was fuzzy. It just wasn't clear. So the challenge there is your graphic wasn't high enough resolution, which would make it a bigger file and could trigger a spam filter. But the real problem is, if you want us to have your contact information, give us your contact information. Let us actually contact you. So let's talk about email signatures. What's the purpose of the email signature? It's to give more value than someone already has. Not having an email signature makes you look unprofessional because if you're a business, you should have some contact information there. And what's the minimum information that someone's email signature should have? Well, if you signed off on your message with your name, very likely your first name. Then it's going to have your full name. It could have your title if, there, if, if that applies to you, company name, and then help, what's helpful for those people. Your website, especially for those of you that still haven't gotten the memo that your email should be your name at your website so that we can get to your website by looking at your email. If you're using Gmail or something else for your email, you have to give us then a link to your website if you want us to be able to find out more about you. Some of you would add your social handles and things there. I don't. I'm easy to find on social. But if we're having a conversation already, I don't think you need my social handles at that point. That's me. That's not you. You decide that for yourself. So again, for me, I have my full name. I have my title or my descriptors. In my case, certified speaking professional, global speaking fellow. I have my contact information. So I have the phone where you can call or you can text. My email is already, you already have my email there, but I think it's in there actually. 
Alan. My website is there, which you can get to anyway with Alan at allenberg.com or Alan at weddingbusinesssolutions.com. Those will both take you actually to the same place. In the case of my longer one, it says that I'm the author of 10 books and it has the links to some of those books. And then there is a testimonial a short testimonial quote in there as well. And I believe I, I put down on the longer one, it'll say something like sales training, website reviews, consulting, speaking, you know, the different types of services that I offer. That's the longer one. The shorter one is my name, my titles, the phone number, the web address. That's it. That's all you need there. So if you want to give us more information, make it useful. If you want to put your photo in there, that's up to you. Again, it shouldn't be too high of a resolution only because people are reading it on their phone. You don't want it to trigger spam filters. You don't want the email to get so large that that could trigger somebody's filter to say, no, I won't accept that. But if you're going to have your contact information, this is goes back to an episode I did on if you can't walk a mile in their shoes, at least take a few steps. Well, if you're going to do that, well, look at your own email signature. Look at it as if you were someone else. Is it adding value or did you give us your phone number, your address, your email address, your website, all those things in a format that we can't use? In one of the cases, I didn't have the person's name until I looked at the graphic because the graphic had the name of the company, right? Not the person's name, I should say the name of the company was in there, What? whereas the regular signature text above that didn't have that and the email address was different than the company name. So again, if you want to give us the information so we know your company and all those things, you might want to put that in real text or I would suggest that you do put that in real text. If you're going to give us your phone number, let us click to dial. If you're going to give us a physical address, let us click to map. If you're going to give us a, a, a website, let us click to get there as opposed to putting all that into a graphic, which none of it is accessible. And now you're actually just going to frustrate your customer. Uh, worse, you could chase them away and, and have them think that, well, if that's what you're doing there, might that imply that you're doing other things like that in your business. And this is where I, I've said it many times where you don't always get credit for doing it right, but you lose points for doing it wrong. When someone can click to call or can click to go to your website, they just do it. They don't think that they can do it. When they think they can and they can't, that's when you could lose points for getting it wrong. So take a look at your email signature. See if you were someone else, is it readable information? Is it usable information? Do I need all that information? And can it be accessed the way that someone would think they could by looking at it? like a clickable phone number, clickable website, and things like that. Well, a little bit introspective here, but we should all go back and take a look at our email signatures, update them if they need updating, of course. And if you are still using something other than your name at your website for your email, please don't be using Gmail like that. If you have a website, give us your name or something at your website, dot whatever it is, so that we can look at your email and also go to your website, which I'm sure you've done, and I know I've done, and people are going to continue to do that. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Wedding Business Solutions Podcast. If you liked it, please subscribe to this channel and post a review on your chosen platform, Apple Podcasts, or whichever one. If you have any questions about anything in this episode or any of my episodes, email me directly at alan at weddingbusinesssolutions.com or visit my website allenberg.com a-l-a-n-b-e-r-g.com if you have any suggestions for future topics or guests that you'd like to see please again email me or visit my website thanks for listening